Today on Jazz Biz 101, we have trumpeter and producer Lee Hogan. He's going to show us nine easy steps to follow to set up your home recording studio. This video is presented in partnership with the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. So let's get right to it. Yeah. What is like a simple setup that you would recommend for musicians that are looking to get into maybe doing some home recording and possibly some producing. Come up with an idea of what you want to make. Do I want to sing something? Do I want to play trombone or sax on something? Think of the idea, picture in your head what you want to do, and then start trying it. So like, let's say, okay, I want to record saxophone. Write a list down on what you need. Microphone, an audio interface, and a computer, and a program as well. Yep. As a vocalist, I'd say, Buy a mic, condenser mic, buy a windscreen, buy an audio interface, and we said Focusrite has some pretty cheap ones, mm -hmm. and you'll need either a laptop or a computer, um, and make sure that the audio interface is compatible with that computer, and then you'll need a computer program, and you have to make sure all those are compatible. Can you talk about like some of the things uh, that that you can use that you already have at home? You have to have an audio f interface, I'm sorry, to record. Like, if unless you use your uh, Max microphone, which is not that great of a microphone, but I know people who've recorded songs with it. So if you're creative, you could do it. You can use your iPhone. And you know, the, the iPhone mic is not that great, but people have made songs from it and people have made video from it, as we see. You know, it might not be the best quality, but it's something that will get you a good demo or or you know like if you use it in a creative way you might be able to make a professional song like use an app to make an effects and make your voice sound very like you know raw or rough and that might be the effect that you're going for and that might yeah. be a, a hit song you never know right. you know you can get a separate mic which is probably like a hundred dollars fifty mm -hmm. to a hundred dollars as well and you could probably get a pretty professional recording if you're able to buy this extra mic with it ipad is like amazing i actually one of the the commercials i did for toyota i did it all on an ipad there's so much you can do with a mixer you know the only issue sometimes is if you want to get into the computer you have to have some kind of way to get it in an interface but if you have a if you have a mixer and then you have like uh something that has an input whether a cd player or a VCR, you know, if some of you are old school VCR or a oh. tape player, you can make great songs with that and a mixer. You know, people have made That's so right. many songs with that. I would recommend if you're starting out <laughs> to get an audio interface, you could spend anywhere from 50 to $100. And a lot of these audio interfaces come with programs as well too. You know, either an Ableton le or something like that getting an audio interface nowadays is so much uh easier and so much more accessible to everybody i'm showing you the interface for people who don't know what does an audio interface do and what this does is number one i can record uh, with a mic and other instruments and i'll show you my keyboard i have a keyboard right here right by the audio interface what i can do is i can plug that keyboard into it or let me show you a microphone here's a microphone right here you can plug this microphone into it as well and what the audio interface does is it'll take your signal which is an analog studio signal and when I combine that with a computer which I'll show you right now I have this iMac right here when I combine that with the computer um, the audio interface takes that signal turns it into digital and then it goes into the computer. SSL, which is a pretty famous company for um, audio. They've been doing, making huge uh, consoles for years. That company just came out with an audio interface, a two, uh, like a two channel one, which you can buy for $200. Or you can get the focus right, which is only $100. We have to buy some equipment for our gigs and whatnot. So there might be some guys out there that they'd be like, man, I don't have an interface. Well, sometimes your yeah. mixer is your interface. Uh, if you have a mixer that has a USB uh, cord that goes into the computer, or if you have a Zoom that goes into the computer, 
you're pretty much like set. It's important to get a particular mic, you know, like um, each mic does different things. And obviously the, the more expensive the night, the mic, the better the sound, but you know, there's some pretty good uh, cheap mics out there. You can buy what is called a condenser mic, which is what you want to buy. If you're a vocalist, you want a condenser mic um, because of the way it picks up the vocals. Abel, you have a Rode mic. They make pretty good condenser mics for not too, um, not too expensive. You know, you can not get a good one for like yeah. $200. Which one's that one though? This uh, one's the NT um, dash one a, and it's important as a vocalist as well too, to get um, a pop screen or a pop filter. If you see my mic, this condenser mic, this is a Rode actually is as, as well. This is kind of a windscreen that I have on it. Um, so what this does is help if you're a vocalist, you know, syllables, certain syllables um, create more air. Like if you say P, 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 that creates a little more air. Um, so you can either have one of these or you can have um, a windscreen, you know. Yeah, it's that little circle, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also for instrumentalists, especially brass, it's good to have one of those as well, too, because brass creates a lot of air. So I'll oh. use that as well with my mic while I'm playing um, just to make sure. And I use a ribbon mic and the ribbon mics to not get too technical. They have a rig ribbon inside of them. So I don't want the rib the air to jiggle the, r the ribbon too much. So I use a windscreen, but it's uh. good to have one of those. I'm showing you my computer right now and the program that you see is a program called logic um, and logic is uh, a program you can use to um, create songs and also you can mix you can master in it you can do a lot of different things as well too and it's called a DAW which is Didio digital audio workstation you know there's a lot of like free programs out there now um, I'm not super hip to all of them, but I think Reaper is one of them. Ableton, they have like an LE version and Cubase as well has an LE version, which so it's just like their lighter version, but you can still make great music with it. And also I think probably one of the biggest ones is GarageBand. Like if you own a Mac, GarageBand comes with a Mac comes and then like yeah. you can do so much with those programs. the deal with electronic keyboards using it as a midi input because i know like certain models depending on the year doesn't have yeah. those capabilities as much or yeah like, yeah maybe you could go into that a little bit is if you buy uh you know an interface that's at least 10 years old you're gonna, not going to have any issues it's just going to go directly in usb and then you'll be able to sync that up with your program whether it be logic ableton pro tools or whatever so you won't have an issue if you have a keyboard that's a little older, um, there could be some issues. Um, you may have to actually buy a USB to MIDI cable. So okay. they, they sell those as well too. So it's just a little kit cable you can get on Amazon. Uh, most keyboards, you know, since the eighties have MIDI jacks in the back of them. So they look a little different than USB. They're like these circle jacks, you know, Right. You would hook that and then you would buy this MIDI to USB cable, hook that to the back of your keyboard and you should be able to do the same thing. Um, there may be a couple settings that you might have to work on your, especially if you have an older keyboard, you might have to go through and change some things in the settings. But if you just go on YouTube and put in your keyboard and then put MIDI, I'm sure there's a video of somebody doing it. Go ahead and ask about the room. Don't be afraid to take blankets. And blankets are so helpful for a room. And my first studio setup, I had a blanket on every wall. And I recorded like my first album on it. And it sounded pretty good. You know, <laughs> so I had blankets mm. hanging up everywhere. Cool. And, my, and it sounded good. You know, I was like, oh, I can actually make it. So don't be afraid to try blankets. Some people have put mattresses up and <laughs> done that. Experimentation is very important. So if you record your instrument or you sing and you just don't like it, maybe the room, it sounds like there's too much room or it's, your vocals is not coming in, 
try to experiment, try to put up a blanket, try to move the mic to the different part of the room, do those different things to get the optimal sound. So what what is it that we we want to or recreate in terms of like putting some blankets? We want it to just be like very like a very uh you know like no echo in the room. What is, what what do you shoot for? What do you So do you that's a good question and it depends on what instrument you or what sound you're looking for. Um sometimes the echo is good, you know, like us three we play um brass instruments or and woodwind instruments so we like a little bit of room because if it's totally dead then it doesn't really sound like you know when you're used to hearing an instrument you're used to hearing the room with it mm -hmm. so some rooms might have too much room so you might be like oh i like the sax of my sound but i'm hearing too many too much of the room so let me just try to put one blanket up see if that deadens the room a little bit so if it depends on if you're a soloist or you're playing in a section. So let's say you're mm. a vocalist and you're an instrumental soloist and you're coming up with a song. You record a song and then you're putting it in with the rest of the instruments and you're like, wait, I can't hear myself because the sax sounds too far back or the vocal sound too far back could have something to do with your room. So you may want to like make your room sound a little bit better too uh, and the you know these are a little bit advanced you know but you'll start noticing when you record stuff and then you start adding it to other instruments then you're like oh okay there's a balance is issue uh you know with vocalists you usually when you record a vocal um a song of vocals you want the vocals to be up front so if there's too much room sound it's going to sound like the vocal is like further back and you know there's plugins that help but there's to an extent sometimes you just will not be able to fix it the way you want to try to get the best sound first um, when you record it as opposed to oh I can record it and then I can use the music program to make it sound better how do you learn how to use these programs and these different MIDI controllers audio interface um, yeah how do you just research instructions in general the old-fashioned way is like Every program comes with a manual. So just go in the manual and the manuals can be super overwhelming because there are thousands of pages because these programs are so like intricate and you can do so many things with them. The manual is like kind of intense. So that's why I recommend figuring out what you need to do first. Don't just open the manual unless you're that type of person. I'm, I'm that type of person where I can just... <laughs> I'll just sit and read right. a manual because I like to do it, you know, but not everybody's like that. So find out what you want to do and then go to the manual, do a search and then figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. In addition to going to YouTube and typing it in and seeing how to do it as well too and watching a video. Now all these things take time, you know, like YouTube you could pull up a video and you're just like, oh, this video is 45 minutes on how to do this, <laughs> you know? So, right. so it takes some time, but there's so much knowledge out there, you know, and, and there's almost a little too much knowledge out there. So you can get overwhelmed by it. So that's why I say it's important to just figure out what you want to do. Picture in your head what you want to do, what type of sound you want to get, what kind of song you want to make, and then do the research because it'll make it easier you won't get overwhelmed by it. You can ask me or you can ask a friend. I'm sure there's somebody yeah. that you can definitely ask me. And that's another point too, as well as like people who've taken the time to really like learn their craft. It's the same with our instruments. Mm -hmm. You want to hire somebody that's like taking their time to learn their craft and stuff. And the same thing with uh, engineering producing, you know, maybe you figure something out, but then you're like, Oh, I need, someone like Lee Hogan to tweak it and make it sound good. People are there, you know, to, to, to kind of make it work. Obviously there's like engineers that who've been doing it for years and years. You know, there's guys that I look at that I would love to, to be as good as them, like a Dave Darlington or, you know, there's a lot of guys out there. So like there's that knowledge as well too. And there's a reason why you pay them money, you know, it's cause yeah. they have the knowledge and they've, They've studied for years and years to make it happen. So don't be afraid to work with those guys. You'll also learn as well. 
you you know you may be paying them some money but you're also going to learn how to do it you know whenever i'm in a recording studio uh, i'm sitting by the engineer and just trying to learn mm. what i can from him as well too you know because they have the the knowledge so you love playing your instrument now is the time for you to learn how to record it and and or if you love singing now's the time to learn how to record it and at least get a good representation of yourself into a computer so that you can start making more music with people and then you can start you know making your own music um which i think is a big trend now anyways everybody a lot of people are doing their own own music and then hopefully you know there's another step after if you really want to make royalties with it you have to hook up with a company or something like that but the first step is to learn how to record your own vocals or instrument i think right. that's very important and it can be done now it's like so easy to do it you know, Abel and i would definitely and i think the audience would love to hear uh, a track that maybe you're comfortable showing us if that's cool yeah all right guys i'm gonna play for you a track um that i did for levi's kids and this feature is a good friend of mine, um, amazing MC. His name is Silent Night. Um, so check this out. I hope you guys like it. One for the music, two for the crap. Three to get loose with it, two how I put it down, little mama say. It's a great big world out there, girl. I don't even sweat it. No, you got it all in the palm of your hands. How you not going to get it? We don't got to ball out. I just want to call out of work for a day. We can hit Main Street, we can put the top down, ain't even nice hair blowing in the rain. We don't got a shot up, we don't got a pop up, we could just walk, I'm not one to complain. We could just dance, it ain't nothing I'm saying, we could just jam, it's a wonderful dance. 